Hi there, Physics 1 class. Thanks for watching my video. Today we're going to talk about problem number 10. But before we start about uh, talking about problem number 10, let me just say that during class, I did not remember how to do this problem. It's been a long time since I've looked at it, and uh, I had to go and look it up. I didn't remember how to do it. Um, that is definitely a part of physics. Uh, I think no matter who you are, how long you've been studying physics, there's always going to be a problem that you're just going to have to go look up. Maybe some theorists can remember how to do everything. I am not one of those people. I have to look up equations, and there's nothing wrong with that. And if you don't know how to solve a problem the first time, you shouldn't feel bad. It's normal. A lot of these problems are difficult and you have to spend time thinking about it. It helps to talk to other people and also to use the internet. We live in a miraculous age where literally anything that you could want to know is at the touch of your fingers. So if you don't know how to do a problem, don't feel bad. It happens to everybody, even physics professors, even though they might like you to think that they know it. Nobody can remember everything. So let's get to the problem. First things first, we need to understand what's happening in the problem. This is really a critical step, is understanding what the problem is trying to say. Right? So let's read the problem carefully and then we can draw a picture and look at the diagram. A canoe has a velocity of 4.45 meters per second southeast relative to the earth. That means the surface of the earth is not moving. But a canoe is on the river that is flowing at 0.76 meters per second, okay? So that means that the river and the kayak are gonna be moving to the east. The kayak's going also south. But the river is actually flowing uh, east faster than the kayak, okay? Let me, let me draw a picture of what I'm talking about. So whenever I do a problem, I always, always, always draw a picture. <laughs> Don't, oh, let's stop sharing. Okay. Always draw a picture. I cannot emphasize how important this is because sometimes when you draw the picture, you realize it. So let's start with the velocity of the river. Our river, the surface of the river, is going this way at, my problem says, seven. Now it says 0.76 meters per second. That means if I was in an inner tube and I was floating here, drinking a Coke, of course, a Coke on my inner tube, I'm floating in, my, in the river there and I'm sitting here and I got some cool sunglasses on. Okay, there's my sunglasses. You can, you can draw cartoons if you want. You can actually draw the cartoons. So there's my can of soda. It's Coca-Cola. We'll put a C there for Coca-Cola, okay? There, maybe it's not the best model, but why not? Okay, so the river is flowing at 0.76 meters per second to the east. This is the direction, this way is east, and so that would mean that over, over here, this is gonna be to the west, and then of course down is south, so. That's pretty standard. So here's our, here is our, our velocity of the river. Now this is really important because it says that the kayak has a, um, it has a velocity of 0 0.45 meters per second to the southeast. And then in the picture here, we see that this is 45 degrees, okay? So that means, okay, and this is all in the coordinate system of someone standing on the side of the river, okay? So there is my wife. She's standing over here. She's saying, stop fooling around. We need you to grill the meat. <laughs> she's over there. We'll draw the hair to denote my wife. Very important. Okay, maybe not, but now, 
there's another reference frame. So we have the reference frame here of my wife, she's stationary. And to her, it appears that my kayak is moving here at 0.45 meters per second. But to my son, or over here, so my, we'll put my son Ben and the kayak is over there. But to me, floating down the river in the inner tube, this is only 0.45 meters per second. So if I draw the velocity vector, okay, in my reference frame, my son is moving away from me. He's actually traveling this direction. So there's going to be a vector pointing this way, coming back over here, okay? So... And that's in a different reference frame. That's in my reference frame. And that's really important, okay? So we don't know what, we don't know what this angle is, okay? And we're going to want to know what this angle is. And we're also going to want to know what this vector is here. We'll call this VV, the vector of Ben, my son, okay? So here is, this is the uh, velocity vector of the kayak. This is the velocity vector of the river. Okay, now we do have a triangle here, but it is not a right triangle. And the Pythagorean theorem only works on right triangles. So if we had a, a triangle here, if we had a right triangle, we could use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, we could, we could do that because this works. So for Pythagorean theorem, we know that A squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. So the hypotenuse, well, that's squared. Oh, I make mistakes. It's okay. It's okay to mess up. a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared if we have a right triangle, but this is not a right triangle. So in order to do this, we're going to have to go way, way back to trig. Get out your trig back books. Dust it off. We have to use the law of cosines and ultimately we're going to use the law of sines in order to do this problem because uh, we can make this vector here so here's our the vector of the canoe then here's our velocity vector of the river so this vector here would be the vector that we're after the vector uh, of the kayaker with respect to the river this is what we're after and then we can get this angle here so let's talk about the law of cosines because that is what we're going to need to use this problem. And let's let's get away from our problem because uh, we can we can put the numbers there. And for now, let's just talk about a a general a triangle that looks something like this. Okay, and we we'll, we are going to label this. We'll call it C. A and B, okay? And we're gonna have our angle, we'll have our angle here, we'll call this alpha, and we'll call this one uh, gamma over there. And we can call this one beta if we want to, okay? Now triangles have very special properties, and in order to do this, we're going to, we're gonna derive the law of cosines, and we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem to do that. So um, if we had a right triangle, then this would be no problem. So here, we kind of have two triangles, and I'm going to add a value here. I'm going to say that the height of our triangle here is equal to y, and I'm going to call this distance here, I'm going to call that x, okay? So this is going to be x, okay? And so let's, let's start by finding uh, the value that we are after. And we will call this side Z right here. So Z is right there. And then uh, X is right there. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to solve for the side A here. And we want to get it in terms of alpha over here because we know what alpha is over there. Okay. So let's write this down. We'll say that A squared is going to equal, we will have a y squared here, then we will have plus x squared, okay? Well, x, as we can see, and b is my total distance right here, b is all the way across, okay? So, this is important. 
Uh, so x is going to equal b minus z, okay? Now, z is this part of this triangle right here, and we can say that z then, so z is going to equal, uh, I've got c here, that's my hypotenuse, c is going to equal cosine of alpha. We know alpha in our problem here, so that's what we're, we're going to stick with, okay? So then up here, this will become, and let's look at y. So y we could write as y is equal to, so my value y here, I can use c over here, and that's gonna be c times sine of alpha. So that'll be c times sine of alpha, okay. So, uh, and I've, I know, we know what B is, or at least in our problem, we will know what B is. So let's write this all in here. Okay, so for Y then we're gonna have, let's write it down here so we have lots of room. There we go, it's our new line. So we'll say A squared is gonna equal Y squared. Y is going to be C squared plus sine squared times alpha plus x squared, which will be b minus z squared, right? So if I put my, um, my value in for z, okay, let's do that. So we'll have a squared is equal to c squared times sine squared times alpha times b minus z, which is going to be c times cosine of alpha squared, quantity squared. So this whole thing is, is gonna be squared now. I had to adjust my camera so that I have lots of room to write. Okay, so we're gonna square this part. So we'll have a squared is equal to c squared times sine squared plus alpha plus, I'm gonna square this, it'll be b squared and then I'll get this term times itself, so that'll be plus c squared times cosine squared plus alpha. Then for my cross terms here, I will get a minus 2bc times cosine of alpha, okay? So that's just from multiplying this out, uh, I get this here. All right, so we need to know another identity here. I see that I have a c squared times sine squared of alpha and a c squared times cosine squared of alpha. So if I have sine squared of alpha plus cosine squared of alpha, this equals one. So if we gather our terms together, if we have c squared times sine squared of alpha, then plus c squared cosine, of, cosine squared of alpha, that's going to equal one times c squared. So now I will have a squared plus b squared plus a c squared up here, because these two terms just go to one, that leaves c squared minus 2b times c cosine of alpha, okay? So now we can use this formula in our problem, this is the law of cosines, right? And you can do this for any angle in the triangle. So if you want to know the opposite angle, there is a formula. You can derive this for each side of the triangle. So if you wanna know B and, uh, so if I wanna know what B is over here, it looks like I can use uh, beta, okay? So alpha is opposite A, Beta is opposite of side B, and gamma is opposite side C. So I could use this formula to solve for C. I would change my angle to gamma and so forth. But you see what I, what I mean. Okay, so now that we have this result, we can apply this to our vector problem. So let's take a look at our problem, okay? So here is our triangle. We've got vectors. This is the vector of our kayak relative to the earth. This is the velocity vector of the river. 
and then this is the one that we're ultimately after. We know this angle theta here, right? That's our angle alpha. This would be uh, side A of our triangle. Then we'd have B and uh, C. Actually, this side would be B, and this side would be C. So using the law of cosines, we can write our result in. So we can say that VCR squared is going to equal uh, VR squared plus VC squared, PC squared, minus 2 VR times BC times cosine of our angle there, alpha, which is going to be 45 degrees. And we're given the, uh, the magnitude of the vector in the problem. And so we can then put in the correct answer for that. But in order to derive this expression, you need to use the law of cosine. And you're basically, you're in effect breaking up your triangle and using uh, the properties of a right triangle to solve this problem. This is the law of cosines. If you'd like to learn more about the law of cosines, Google law of cosines, lumen learning up here in the search bar. So if we follow the link, there is a terrific description of the law of cosines. You can read more about it and it will explain everything to you. That was part A. Now we want to get to part B. For part B, we want to know what is the angle of our triangle right here. Now, if we knew all the angles, the other two angles, we know that all three angles have to add up to 180. So 180 degrees has to equal uh, alpha plus beta plus gamma. But we don't know the other angles, so we're going to have to figure out what this angle is right here. Okay. So we can go back to our previous diagram. Let's look at our, let's make another diagram. You can never draw too many pictures. That's what I like to say. So we've got VR here and draw nice big pictures. Don't let it get crowded. Use lots of paper. I like trees, but I also like physics and I use a lot of paper whenever I do any kind of physics, I always use a lot of paper. All right, so we're gonna use trig to get this angle over here. We know what alpha is over here. So if we know what alpha is over here, we want to get to this angle over here. Okay, so we call this part over here. I think we call it, we'll call it, we'll start over. This part will be Z. And this part will be X. The important thing is that you keep track of it. Okay. So we want to get X here. And we, uh, we, are, we know what VCR is here. Okay? And if we knew what Y was, then we could get that. So now we're going to use the law of signs in effect. This is we're not going to say that. Okay, well, I am going to say it. But basically, this is going to be the law of sines. This is a very special property about triangles. So if we knew what y is, which we don't, we'll say y is going to equal uh, vcr times, and this is going to be gamma. My angle there is gamma, which is what we're after. vcr of sine of gamma equals y, okay? Well, that's great. And we just so happen to have another triangle over here where we do, we, 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 we know the angle here and we know what VCR is over here. So uh, we can also say for our, our triangle here that y is going to equal VC 
times sine of alpha. We know what sine of alpha is. Now we can set these two equal to each other. We can say, oh, I'm off the page here. Oh, there we go. Y equals VC sine of theta. That's also going to equal Y. So now we can equate these two. We'll have VCR times sine of gamma, which will equal VC times sine of alpha, right? Well, we know the angle here. Alpha is equal to 45 degrees. And I'm going to convert that angle into radians. So to get into radians, I'm going to take my angle and I'm going to multiply it by pi over 180 degrees. This is going to give me my answer in radians. If I do that, I'll say 45 degrees times pi over 180. Well, uh, 2 times 45 is 90. So 2 times that is 90. Uh, 2 times 90 is 180. So that's going to give me a 4. So I'll have a 4 down here. And that is going to give me pi over 4 in radians because I use Mathematica and Mathematica is always in radians. Uh, so, or at least I, I keep it in radians. So our angle here is pi over four. So if you use radians on your calculator instead of degrees, which is a lot more convenient in some ways. Okay, so then we are after alpha right there. So to get alpha, we're going to say sine of, no, gamma. I, I said alpha, I meant gamma. We are after sine of gamma our angle right here. So sine of gamma, we're gonna divide VCR by both sides. So this will be VC times sine of alpha, which we know, divided by VCR, okay? Well, sine of pi over four or sine of 45, so we'll say sine of pi over four is going to give me the square root of 1 over 2. So the 1 over the square root of 2. This is sine of 45 degrees. That's a very important identity. So we can rewrite this now. We can say sine of alpha is going to give me VC divided by the square root of 2 for my sine right here. And then now I can substitute in for VCR if I go back up here. Okay. So I'm going to have to take, if I want just VCR, the velocity of the kayak relative to the river, I'll take the square root of this side. So I'll say this is the square root of VR squared plus VC squared. Oh, and I'm not, oh, there we go. VR squared plus VC squared minus 2 VR times VC times cosine of alpha. There we go. Sine of alpha is going to equal VC divided by two times the square root of VR squared, the velocity of our river squared, plus VC squared. I, I forgot the squared, there it is. VC squared minus two VR times VC cosine of alpha. So now we can get alpha we're going to have to take the arc sine of both sides. So this will be uh, sine minus one of VC. Yep, sine of VC divided by the square root of two times VR squared plus VC squared minus two. VR times VC cosine of alpha. There we go. We have done it. And let's just confirm that that is the correct answer before I turn you loose into the world. Into the world, yes, it is the correct answer. Now, one thing to note is that this is going to give you the answer in 
radians. Okay, so if we want to convert from degrees, or if we want to uh, convert into degrees, then we will have to multiply this by 180 degrees divided by pi. That's going to be our conversion factor. This is going to give us our angle in degrees. That's what we need. Well, physics one, that's all I have for you right now. But remember, if you can't figure it out at first, don't feel bad because I'll tell you that most physicists couldn't do it the first time either. After you do the problems a hundred times, it a hundred times it becomes easier. But I remember from my classes in grad school that most people can't figure it out the first time. They have to go look it up. Uh, it just takes time. So please do not feel bad if you don't get it at first. The important thing is that you don't give up because I truly believe that um, a lot of these problems are all about your mindset. It's your attitude. I don't believe that anyone is necessarily bad at math. I think you can learn math if you want to. If you have what they call the growth mindset, you say, okay, I don't understand this thing, but I'm gonna figure it out. As long as you keep that attitude, you can figure it out. I think intelligence is something that you learn and it's partly about if you wanna learn it. If there's something you really want to do, most people can figure it out. So you should never feel like math is beyond you or physics is too hard because it just really is not. I think that anybody can do this stuff if you really want to and you, you really go into that mindset and say, okay, this is a difficult problem, but I'm gonna figure it out. I might get help from my friends. I might go to Dr. Wisby. I, I might look online. And I'll tell you, I didn't remember how to do this the first time. I may have done this problem before. I don't remember. I forgot the law of cosines. I had to go look it up. So you should never feel bad. Thanks for watching. That's all I have for you for tonight. Check back soon for the end of chapter three. The conclusion of chapter three, I promise it's going to be epic in a vector sense. <laughs> I'll see you on Monday. The answer is A, it says right there. Makes perfect sense. P, then Q, we start at the same place and end up at the same place. All right. Multiplication by a scalar. If you multiply the vector by a scalar, it makes it bigger. Longer, it's like saying two times this vector gives me two of this vector. Or if you say three, three times this vector gives me three of this vector makes it longer. The scaling factor, it's like you just have C vectors, C A vectors, you add them together, it gets longer. Multiplication by a scalar vector cannot have a negative magnitude. To multiply a vector by a negative number, we reverse its direction. Yes. Negative vector, pow! Multiply by negative one, pow! Multiply by another negative one, pow! Which of the vectors in the second row shows A plus B? Yes, I can do this. I know this one. Let's draw a picture on this one. I am going to draw a parallel of B. Okay, it's gonna, have, it's gonna be B. I'm gonna put it over here. It's parallel, the same size. That means A plus B has to go like this. That's A plus B, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's C. That looks an awful lot like C. It is C, there it is, A plus B. Tail, tail the snout rule, tail the snout rule, there it is, it's okay. Okay, erase. To subtract B from A, draw A. Place the tail of minus B at the tip of A. So we've reversed. This was B minus B, here's B. Minus B looks like this, minus B, yes. So A plus B, we reversed it. Okay, 
draw an arrow from the tail of A, the vector A, to the tip of minus B. This vector is A minus B. There it is, we've done it, okay. Given, the, given vector P and Q, what is P minus Q? Well, let me tell you. The minus sign is going to turn Q backwards. It's gonna make it backwards. Let me draw minus Q. It looks like that. That is minus Q, ladies and gentlemen. I've done it. Minus Q, there it is. That's a minus Q. It's going that way. And I'm gonna move my vector over here. It's gonna be a minus Q. There it is, minus, oh no, not that one. I didn't, I didn't change it. Oh no, I'm just, I'm just adding vectors now. Just adding vectors. Okay, so this, that's gonna add up like this. I'm gonna put my two vectors together. Okay, that's a, I've got a minus Q down there. Let me write minus Q. So this is minus Q. We'll draw the vector symbol up there, minus Q. So this over here, this is P minus uh, Q. There it is. It looks an awful lot like D. It is D. It is D. Remember, whatever happens, don't feel bad because it's easy to make mistakes. You should never feel bad about making a mistake. Mistakes happen. There's troubles in life. What can we say? Every life, that's, there's going to be some trouble. Which of the vectors in the second row shows 2A minus B? Hmm, let's get out. Let's draw some vectors. Okay, 2A. All right, here, let's draw 2A here. There's an A. I need another A because there's two of them, two times. <laughs> that means we doubled it. B is pointing down this way. So B is going to go up this way. It's backwards. There's B. That is minus B. Yes. We've done it again. Minus, minus B, the vector. There it is. Minus B. Then I'm going to draw. I'm going to start here. Draw it up like that. Okay. There's, there's B. Um, uh, there is, what is that? What is it? Oh, that's right over here. 2A minus B, that looks an awful lot like A. I'm thinking it's A. Take a minute, think about it while I erase this. Okay, I'm gonna erase this. What is it? What's my vector? It's A, I was right. 2A plus a minus B vector. Minus B gets reversed coordinate system and vector components. What are they? What are vector components? A coordinate system is an artificially imposed grid that you place on a problem in order to make quantitative measurements. Quantitative, not qualitative. If it's quantitative, it has numbers, okay? We will generally use Cartesian coordinates there are other coordinate systems that are useful. Spherical coordinates, cylindrical coordinates, hyperbolic coordinates. We're gonna stick to Cartesian coordinates. Polar coordinates, it's real and imaginary. Those are cool, imaginary. Oh, what is square root of minus one? Something to think about. Coordinate axes have a positive end and a negative end. Separated by a zero at the origin, where the two axes cross. There's a zero there. X marks the spots of the origin. We have an angle. So the angle between X and Y is 90 degrees. For vector A and an XY coordinate system, we can define the two new vectors parallel to the axis that we call the component vectors of A. So. We have our vector A in the center. It has an X and a Y component. Then if we add them together, if we add AX 
plus a y hat or a x vector plus the vector a y we get a okay you can see using the parallelogram rule that a is the vector sum of the two component of the vector um, a which is equal to a x minus a y okay there's a minus there but let's What's that supposed to be a plus? That's weird because they have a there equals whatever. I think that's a mistake, but whatever. All right, I think it is a mistake. You can see using the parallelogram rule that a is a vector sum of the two component vectors. Yes, it. We're gonna just no go back. Go back. And the mouse is not working anymore. There it is. A is equal to AX plus AY. If you don't believe me, go back to the parallelogram rule. What is it? Parallelogram rule. Parallelogram rule. E, D plus E equals D plus E. So the vector E plus D equals our new vector. That should be a plus. Should be a plus. All right. Little typo there, it's fine. Just erase that, okay. Tactic box 3.2, determining the components of a vector, the absolute value of AX. So of the X component AX is the magnitude of the component vector AX. Okay, the sine of AX is the positive of AX points in the positive X direction. Negative if AX points in the negative X direction. Okay, the sine of AX is positive if AX points in the positive direction, positive X direction. The Y component AY is determined similar, similarly. Okay, so what does that mean? The absolute value of AX of the X component AX is the magnitude, the component of the vector A x okay and a x does not have a y component it points in the direction of x if it's negative it's pointing the other the other direction all right let's draw negative a x negative a x is going this way negative a y is going down this way I'm trying to erase that. There we go. All right, moving on. Component vectors can be decomposed into component vectors parallel to the coordinate axis system. Each, so you, if you have a vector A, you can make AY and AX vectors, okay? So we can break it down and these, these vectors, AX and AY, are gonna point in the direction of our coordinate system. So if you're on an inclined plane, maybe you're on some plane, then you want to make your coordinate system in the direction of motion. So if you have something sliding down a plane, make your X coordinate system going down the plane. Each component vector can be described by a single number, a scalar called the component. Component AX tells us two things, how big AX is and toward which end of the axis it's pointing. All right, finding the components of a vector. We can find the components using trigonometry. The following case, we find that AX is the magnitude of the vector A times cosine of theta. Okay, that's AX. AY is similarly A, the magnitude of the vector A times sine of theta. So there's a picture right over here. This is really important, okay? So the magnitude of our vector A times sine of theta equals AY. This, these two components make a right triangle, and I always draw them, okay? So we're gonna say that AX is going this way, that's our vector AX, and AY is pointing in that direction. Makes a right triangle there, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. If we know AX and AY, we can find the magnitude 
of our vector. Okay, let's erase those. We'll go on to our next slide. All right, if we know ax and ay, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. It's a right triangle. We can get our magnitude, and um, we can also get the angle. If we know ax and ay, then we can get our angle using arctangent. Um, so if you have a problem where you're trying to get vx and vy or ax and ay, then you can use these relationships, okay? So in a projectile problem, we can get the time to know how long the particle is in the air. Then we can find either our uh, how far it travels in the x direction. Okay, so what's the, our velocity? How far does the projectile go? What was its initial velocity maybe, depending on your problem? Okay, so down here in the figures, we see that the magnitude of the vector is equal to the square root of ax squared plus ay squared. And then we have to get the angle, we can use uh, arctangent. So arctangent of ay over ax is equal to our angle. Okay, uh, it works for all different orientations of vectors. Okay, we, uh, over here we've got a vector pointing down. So we have C, which is going down. And we've got our angle theta here. This is still, it's still a right triangle. Okay, it's just rotated down. So uh, our, our trig relationships still hold. Here's our angle theta. Okay, and this, uh, in this case, uh, we get a minus sign here. So this will be minus C cosine of phi, and Cy is gonna be pointing down. This negative sign tells us that Cy is pointing in the negative y direction, okay? Then here, uh, this is our angle. And so in this case, now we have Cx over Cy, okay? So it's uh, Cx is uh, opposite to our angle here, and so now we have Cx over Cy. So think about your triangle. Think about the sides of your triangle. This side is the opposite, even though we're calling it the x component. This side is uh, adjacent, okay? So it's Cy, which is equal to minus C times cosine of phi. Okay, and with that, I think we are going to end it here because I think I made my video much longer than I intended. So, that is all for now. We will finish chapter three, hopefully tomorrow. I hope this was useful and we will see you tomorrow in class thank you for watching and you should be reading chapter three and finishing chapter three homework that's available i also send out an iCalendar link so you can put that in your iphone we won't use google calendar since it doesn't seem to be working for everyone and we i think everyone has an apple device so i will see you later thank you for watching and have a good night. Thank you, like and subscribe down below.